Hi, I'm Kevin and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about the materials that backcountry pots and pans are made of and I'll discuss the pros and cons of each. And we might even do some cool testing. You've got three main choices for materials for backcountry pots and pans. Those are stainless steel, aluminum and titanium. I'm going to do some tests with each of these materials and uh, then I'll discuss pros and cons of each. Weight is a prime consideration for backcountry pots and pans, especially for backpackers who are looking for the lightest weight. So let's look at the densities of these three different materials. The density of metal is often measured in grams per cubic centimeter or in pounds per cubic foot. The lower the number, the less dense the material. You might hear some people say that titanium is the least dense, but actually aluminum is the least dense, followed by titanium and then stainless steel. There is some variation in the density of stainless steel because not all stainless steels are made the same. But aluminum pots are not very strong. Aluminum has a very low modulus of rupture, which is just a fancy way of saying it's a very bendy material. The modulus of rupture is measured in gigapascals or kilopound per square inch, KSI. The lower the number, the more bendy or soft the material is. We see here in this table that stainless steel has a very high modulus of rupture, aluminum has a very low modulus of rupture, and titanium is somewhere in the middle. The lower the number, the more flexible the material is, and aluminum is very, very weak compared to the other two materials. Because aluminum is a weaker material, titanium and stainless steel pots can be made with much thinner material. And generally speaking, you're going to find that titanium pots are the lightest on the market per volume, and therefore they're uh, very, very attractive for those backpackers who are counting every gram in their pack. Back in the fall of 2022, I did some online research, and I looked at one liter pots, and I recorded the, the price range and the weight range of one liter pots made with aluminum, titanium, and stainless steel. Stainless steel pots are hands down the heaviest, but also the cheapest. Titanium pots are overall the lightest, but also the most expensive. And aluminum pots are right in the middle. They've got a, a medium weight and a medium price range compared to the other two materials. But what I found most interesting about this research was that titanium pots, some titanium pots, are slightly cheaper than the cheapest aluminum pot that I could find. For me, that's pretty new news. I remember when titanium was very expensive and you paid a lot for a, a good titanium pot. It seems to me that the price of titanium has dropped over the last few years. Uh, depending on what brand you're looking at, titanium can actually be somewhat competitive with aluminum. Thermal conductivity is another important factor for camping pots and pans. That's a measure of how well heat transfers and disperses in that pot or pan. Thermal conductivity is important if you want to do real cooking. Uh, a pan with good thermal conductivity will heat evenly and won't have hot spots that burn. This table shows the thermal conductivity of different metals. I've added copper and cast iron as a comparison. Copper has the highest thermal conductivity of any common metal and that's why it is often used in some of the best professional cookware. But it's really expensive and impractical for camping. Aluminum is second best to copper and it's cheap enough for camping pots. And so if you want to do some real cooking while you're camping, it's the best choice. That's followed by cast iron, then titanium, then stainless steel. Special mention to cast iron that has a very, very low thermal conductivity, but it's still an excellent material to cook on. That's because it is made very, very thick and heavy. Um, it is so thick and heavy that it takes a long time to heat up, and when it does, it gives you that nice even heat that a material with high thermal conductivity does. Unfortunately, despite being excellent to cook in, it is very heavy. Um, that's the sacrifice you make, so this is likely not going to be something you're going to bring on most backcountry trips. I'm going to demonstrate thermal conductivity by boiling two cups of water in three different pots, one of stainless steel, one of titanium, and one of aluminum. As each of those three pots come to a boil, I'm going to use a temperature probe to measure the temperature of the water and track it. And I'm also going to use this laser thermometer to measure the temperature of the top lip of the pot. Uh, we'll graph the results and see what they look like. Here's the aluminum pot as it comes to a boil. The, uh, what's really interesting here is the temperature of the lip of the pot uh, closely matches the increase in the temperature of the water. 
When that aluminum pot finally comes to a boil, I cannot hold the lip of the pot with my bare hands. I need some sort of protection. More recently, I did this test again, but using my thermal imaging camera. And towards the end of the burn, you can see the top of the pot is very, very hot. I cannot touch it with my bare hands. I need to use some gloves. And when I do the same test with a titanium pot, I get a very different result. The temperature of the top lip of that pot is only at 30 degrees Celsius when the water comes to a full boil. This is what the titanium pot looks like towards the end of its burn, looking at it with the thermal imaging camera. You can see the pot is still hot, but it's not as, as bright orange as the bottom of the pot at all, not like the aluminum pot. And I get a very similar result when I do the same test with stainless steel. Uh, in fact, the top lip of that pot is only 25 degrees Celsius and it's no problem to lift that pot with my bare hands. And with the thermal camera, this is what that stainless steel pot looks like when it comes to a boil. I can easily grab it and set it down. While I was doing these tests, I also measured the amount of fuel I consumed. And uh, it was really interesting to me that there was very, very little difference. In fact, my scale is only accurate to half a gram, so I can't, I can't say there was a difference. That tells me that these materials are about as efficient as each other. It would seem that the heat transfers from the stove to the bottom of the pot and into the water at about the same rate. Um, aluminum is certainly distributing the heat more evenly, but uh, that transfer to the water is about the same and the efficiency is the same. However, it's clear that if I wanted to have a nice evenly heated pan and perhaps fry some fish, I should choose aluminum. So let's summarize these results. Stainless steel is the most durable, it's generally the heaviest, um, and it is the cheapest. It is ideal for uh, outfitters or youth groups because it, it's really robust um, and cheap and uh, it's not great for cooking, but if you burn something in it, you can take some sand and scrape out the inside and get it clean. So this is a, a, a great option if you're on a budget or um, you expect a lot of abuse out of your pots or pans. Titanium is generally the most expensive, but the price has dropped in recent years. It is very, very light and sought after by backpackers who are counting every gram. It's not great to cook in, um, although I did do uh, a demo of frying some eggs in a titanium pan in a, in a separate video. It is possible. You've really just got to manage your heat um, because it will create hot spots and cause burning. But it is excellent for boiling water quickly. Um, and uh, if that's all you're doing, reheating um, some dehydrated meals, uh, as many backpackers do, then titanium is ideal, uh, despite being a little bit more expensive. And aluminum, although not the cheapest, is the best for cooking because of its high thermal conductivity. Um, that distributes the heat nice and evenly. If you're frying something, you'll get a nice sear, and it avoids hot spots which cause burning. Also, aluminum pans and pots usually come with a non-stick coating these days, which is great if you're trying to cook something fancy in the backcountry. Uh, as an example, if I know I'm going to be on a canoe trip and probably catching some fish, I'm going to bring this even heavier aluminum frying pan. It's got a non-stick coating. It is excellent. Uh, even on an open flame, um, I get great results with it. All right, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you got something out of this. If you did, please hit like, share, and subscribe. As always, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.